After studying this module, you shall be able to know about human bones and their types, individual description of various bones and the importance of bones in the forensic investigations. The human skeleton system is the most important part of the human anatomical structure. It is only with the help of the skeletal system a body attains its rigidity. It is the basis of the body comprising of bones and additional connective tissues that defends and maintains the body cells and internal organs. The human skeleton comprises of total 206 bones out of which 6 are the small bones of the middle ear that play role in the auditory process. However, a newborn baby has 300 bones some of them fused to finally result in 200 bones in the later age. The skeletal structure of a body is embraced of bones, tendons, ligaments as well as cartilages. The chief utility of the skeletal structure is to provide support and movement to the body. Besides this, the skeletal system protects the inner structures and delicate body organs like heart, brain, kidney, lungs, all these. The cranium protects the brain and eyes while the ribs defend the heart and lungs. Similarly, the vertebra protects the spinal cord. The bones are held by the help of the tendons which are hard inflexible bands. A usual bone has an external coating of firm or compacted bone that is extremely durable, thick and hard and below it there is a specific coating of spongy bone that looks like a honeycomb, lighter and little stretchy. The central of certain bones has got a jelly like bone marrow in which new cells are continuously formed for the production of blood. Now let's see the types of bones. The bones can be characterized rendering to their general form into long bones and short bones. Let's see the long bones. First, the long bones are found in the limbs and each consists of a body or shaft and two extremities. As the term specifies, these bones are long in size, cylindrical in shape and has wide rigid levers for muscle actions. The elongated bones are not right angled but bent. The bend usually takes place in the double planes thus giving a larger strength to the bone. The bones included in this category are the clavicles, the humerus, the radius, the ulna, the, the femur, the tibia and fibula. Now let's see the long bones of the upper extremity in detail. Humerus. Humerus is the elongated and biggest bone of the upper extremity that is the upper arm bone. It is separated into a body and two extremes. It is cylindrical shaft like bone that has a flattened distal end and a rounded articular surface at the proximal end. The higher termination of the humerus contains the head which projects into the glenoid cavity. Now radius is the lateral bone of the forearm. It is located on the adjacent side of the ulna and sideways forms the skeleton of the forearm. These bones coherent with the humerus at the proximal termination and the wrist bones at the distal end. Now ulna, it is the intermediate bone in the forearm which is corresponding to the radius. At the proximal end it has a hook like articular exterior and the distal end comprises of a round head and a steloid process. Now let's see the long bones of the lower extremity. Femur that is the thigh bone. It is the elongated and strongest bone of the human body. It is practically cylindrical in the superior part. In the straight position it is not upright, has got a separate head like structure at upper end and is associated by a significant intermission that relates to the extent of the pelvis. It again inclines in progressively descending manner medial words in the direction of its inferior part to form the knee joint. The extent of this leaning differs in various individuals 
and is superior in the woman than in the men and on the expansion of the superior extent of the pelvis and that's why the females have got a broader pelvis tibia that is the bone of the leg it is present in the central position of the leg having prismoid arrangement with the prolonged overhead where it forms the knee joint constricted in the inferior third and over enlarged to lesser extent at the lower end it has a body and two extremes in the male its track is perpendicular and corresponding with the bone of the contrasting side on the other hand in the female it consists of a descending diagonal track and adjacent reason to compensate for the superior obliquity of the femur in the fibula the fibula is situated on the adjacent part of the tibia where it is linked overhead and below it is the minor among the two leg bones and also in ratio to its dimension it is the slimmest of all elongated bones now after finishing with the long bones let's see the short bones the part of the bones is projected for strength and united with the restricted movement it is created of number of small bones that is the carpus and tarsus these contain cancellous tissue protected by a thin crust of compact substance the patella is composed of the additional sesamoid bones again we can understand by seeing into the short bones of the upper extremity as well as short bones of the lower extremity now let's see the short bones of the upper extremity first the carpals or the wrist bones the carpal bones are eight in number and they are organized in two rows those of the proximal row beginning from the radial to ulnar side are termed as scaphoid lunate triangular and pisiform and those of the distal row in the similar direction are called trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate then afterwards the metacarpals this contains five cylindrical shaped bones which are added up to the adjacent side the body is prismoid arrangement and bent so as to be curved in the longitudinal track behind and bowl shaped in front it has three surfaces the medial the lateral and the dorsal then the phalanges the phalanges are 14 in count three for all fingers and two for the thumb each contains a body and two boundaries the body points from the overhead descending is curved posteriorly concave in front from directly above descending level from side to side its edges are irregular which give extra strength to the fibrous covers of the flexor tendons now let's see the short bones of the lower extremity the tarsals the tarsal bones are seven in number in contrast to the wrist bones or the carpal bones which are 8 in number the lower extremity tarsal bones which are 7 in number are calcaneus talus cuboid navicular and the first second and third cuneiforms so that completes 7 bones metatarsals now the metatarsals consist of five bones which are numbered from the medial side the body is prismoid in form points progressively from the tarsal to the phalangeal extremity and is bent longitudinally so as to be curved below and slightly convex above the phalanges the phalanges of the foot resemble in digit and overall organization with the hand same as that there are two in the great toe and three in each of the other toes they fluctuate from them though in their size the forms being much condensed in measurement and particularly in the first row laterally compacted now after long bones let's see the flat bones where the major necessity is both extensive shield and providing the wide ranging shells for well built connection the bones are prolonged into comprehensive flat plates as in the skull and scapula let's see the skull first the skull is maintained on the meeting of the vertebral column and is of an ovoid form broader back than in front it is composed of a series of flattened or irregular bones with one exception that is the mandible or the jaw bone 
and all these are immovably jointed together. Overall, the skin contains 22 bones in total, which can be divided into two parts, the cranium and the facial. The cranium contains 8 bones, whereas the facial bones are 14 in number. The cranium, the 8 bones are 1 frontal, 2 parietals, 2 temporals, 1 ethmoid, 1 sphenoid and 1 occipital. So there are total 8 bones in the cranium. Whereas in the facial bones which are 14 in number, there are 2 nasals, 2 maxillae, 2 lacrimals, 2 zygomatics, 2 palatines, 2 inferior nasal conchi, 1 vomer and 1 mandible that is the jaw bone. Now the sternum that is the chest plate. The ventral ends of the ribs become united to one another by a longitudinal bar termed the sternal plate and opposite the first seven pair of ribs these sternal plates fuse in the middle line to form the manubrium and the manubrium and the body of the sternum. The sternum is an extended compressed bone making the central part of the frontal wall of thorax. Its higher termination maintains the clavicles and its border articulates with the cartilages of the first seven set of ribs. It consists of three parts named from above downwards the manubrium, the body or gladiolus and the zephoid process. Now the scapula that is the shoulder blade. The scapula forms the posterior part of the shoulder girdle. The scapula or shoulder blade is a large flattened triangular shaped bone. It is located in the posterior lateral part of the thorax. The shoulder bone is thin, fragile and can be easily broken. Now afterwards let us see the irregular bones. The uneven bones are like commencing their irregular form will not be gathered under the previous heads. They consist of cancellous tissue surrounded inside a thin layer of compressed bone. The uneven bones are the vertebrae, sacrum, coccyx, temporal, sphenoid, ethmoid, zygomatic, maxilla, mandible, palatine, inferior nasal concha and hyoid. Now let us see the vertebrae. The vertebral column is a flexus and flexible column formed of a series of bones called vertebrae. The vertebrae are total 33 in number and are grouped under the names cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and oxygen according to the region they occupy from top to bottom. They are 7 in the cervical region, 12 in the thoracic region, 5 in the lumbar region, 5 in the sacral region which they fuse together to form ultimately one part and 4 in the coccygeal region. The vertebrae in the upper three regions of the column remain distinct throughout life and are known as true or movable vertebrae. Those of the sacral and coccygeal regions on the other hand as I told you are termed as false or fixed vertebrae because they are united with one another in the adult to form two bones, five forming the upper bone or sacrum and four the terminal bone or coccyx. Now let us understand the sacrum. The sacrum is a huge trilateral bone located in inferior portion of the vertebral column and at the higher and posterior portion of the pelvic cavity where it is implanted like a wedge among the two hip bones. Its superior part or base articulates with the last lumbar vertebra and at its tip is with the coccyx. Now let us see the coccyx. The coccyx is typically designed of four elementary vertebrae. The numeral may though be greater than before to five or make lesser to three. So it can be three or five also but usually they are four. In all three parts that are outlined have a fundamental body and articular corner to corner progressions. The preceding piece occasionally the third is an ordinary nodule of the bone. So all the parts are destitute of pedicles, lemini and spinous progressions. Now the other irregular bone is the hyoid. The hyoid bone is formed like a horseshoe which is put off from the tip of the styloid progressions of the temporal bones by the stylohyoid ligaments. It comprises of five parts 
that is a form two superior carnu and two inferior or minor carnu the jaw bone that is the mandible the mandible is the largest and strongest bone of the face and it serves for the reception of the lower teeth it contains of a curved straight part and the body and two vertical parts the vertical parts the straight part the ramai that join with the finishes of the body closely at right positions to summarize the topic of this different type of bones the human skeletal system it is the significant part of the human anatomical structure it is only with the help of the skeletal system a body attains its rigidity it is the basis of the body containing of bones and additional connective tissues that defends and maintains the body cells and interior organs the main function of the skeletal organization is to provide support and movement to the body besides this the skeletal system protects the internal fragile body organs like heart brain kidney and lungs the cranium protects the brain and eyes while the ribs protect the heart and lungs similarly the vertebra protects the spinal cord there are total 206 bones in the adult human body can be divided into long and short bones as well as flat and irregular bones both upper and lower extremities have long and short bones long bones of upper extremity are humerus radius and ulna whereas short bones are eight carpals five metacarpals and 14 phalanges long bones of the lower extremity are femur tibia and fibula whereas short bones are seven tarsals five metatarsals and 14 phalanges the skull contains 22 flat bones out of which cranium comprises of eight bones and 14 facial bones the vertebra sacrum coccyx hyoid and mandible are irregular